All right, how's everybody doing this evening? Back again with another video for you guys and gals. And tonight, what I have for everyone is my versus slash comparison video between the Samsung Galaxy S8 and the Google Pixel XL. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to compare and contrast some similarities and some differences. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you guys and gals my overall thoughts and a recommendation or two as to which device to pick up. So without further ado, let's jump into this video. Now, starting off, when we talk about the overall build quality and design between both of these devices, you couldn't have two more differently built and or designed devices. So in particular, with your Google Pixel XL, which is manufactured by HTC, you have your traditional metal unibody with a glass top in the back and a glass display on the front, okay? Whereas, when you're looking at the overall build quality and design of the Samsung Galaxy S8, this is where you have your more modern approach with your glass on glass design and your tapered bezels and minimal um, bezels and chin and or on chin on the top and bottom. So you got your glass on the back, glass on the front, and a metal mid frame. Alright? Other than that, when we talk about the overall build quality and design, I have to say both of these devices feel really, really good in the hand. They both have really nice weights to them. That being said, the, the Google Pixel XL has the more substantial weight to it, but overall, again, it still feels very solid in the hands, whereas the Samsung Galaxy S8 is the more lightweight and more comfortable device in the hands, but I would credit that to the, again, curved bezels and minimalist type design here, especially with the minimal chin and forehead. So, you know, when we talk about the overall build quality and design, at least in my opinion, I'm going to call it a tie, but this is one of those areas of smart devices where it comes down to personal preference and which one you feel like you're going to enjoy more. Maybe you're going to like the more substantial weight of the Google Pixel XL and the more old school ratios, or maybe you think you're going to be a bigger fan of the modern style design, glass on glass design, and the newer aspect ratios here. But one thing you have to keep in mind with the newer aspect ratios and the modern design is that that makes the S8 a slippery beast. So a case is mandatory if you guys and gals decide to go with the S8. But that's just my two cents. Overall, when we talk about the overall build quality and design, in my opinion, I'm going to have to call it a tie. Both the manufacturers of these two devices did a great job, and the overall build quality and design on both of these devices is top notch. Next now, the next thing I want to talk about with you guys and gals is the overall displays on these devices. Now we're going to start off with the Samsung Galaxy S8. In regards to the display on the Samsung Galaxy S8, the Samsung Galaxy S8 has a 5.8 inch quad HD display or 2K display with a resolution of 2960 by 1440p and it has the newer 18 by 9 aspect ratio which gives it a screen density of 570 pixels per inch. Whereas the Google Pixel XL has the more old school 16 by 9 aspect ratio and is packing a 5.5 inch AMOLED display which is a little bit older than the Super AMOLED display on the Samsung Galaxy S8. So in particular because the Google Pixel has the older um, display and the older layout in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio that means it has the more traditional uh, 4K or 2K resolution with a resolution of 2560 by 1440p which gives it an overall screen density of 534 pixels per inch. Now that we've ran through the technical specs I just want to give you guys my thoughts about these two displays in regards to the day-to-day -day usage. 
And when we talk about the day-to-day -day usage between these two displays, I have to say both of these displays were phenomenal. I had no issues with either of these displays. While I was using them indoors or outdoors, they worked without issue. And both the displays on either of these devices are top-notch. So again, at least in regards to the displays, I'm going to have to call this category another tie. Now, up next now, the next thing I want to do with you guys and gals is dive a little bit deeper into the hardware and the software on these two devices. Let's start off with the hardware. Now, in regards to the hardware, you guys are going to hear a lot of similarities and some major, major differences. Now, starting off with the hardware, both of these devices have 4 gigabytes of onboard RAM. The Samsung Galaxy S8 does have 64 gigabytes of built-in storage, whereas the Google Pixel XL comes in either 32 gigabytes of onboard storage or 128 gigabytes of onboard storage. The Samsung Galaxy S8 does incorporate a micro SD card expansion slot whereas the Google Pixel XL does not. So if you're looking at picking up the either the Google Pixel or the Google Pixel XL, I do recommend you spend the extra money and go with the higher storage variants, okay? It's better to have a lot of storage and not need it than need the storage and not have it, which is something that S8 owners don't have to worry about because they have that included micro SD card slot. Now, moving on. Diving into more hardware, both of these devices have 8 megapixel front facing cameras which have some different recording resolutions. Now the 8 megapixel front facing camera on the S8 can record up to 4K videos or 2K videos at 30 frames per second and do 720p slow motion at 120 frames per second and 240 frames per second respectively. Whereas the 8 megapixel camera on the Google Pixel XL can only tap out at a maximum recording resolution of 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now, as I said earlier, both of these devices have varying displays. The S8 has a 5.8 inch display, Super AMOLED style, and the Google Pixel has a 5.5 inch display in the regular AMOLED. Okay? Now, that being said, all right, diving into more hardware, when we jump around to the backs of these devices, both of these devices have 12 megapixel rear facing cameras and they can record up to 4K videos and 720p slow motion at 120 frames per second and 240 frames per second respectively. Both of these devices have fingerprint sensors. Now this is where you'll notice the first major difference because the Samsung Galaxy S8 fingerprint sensor is pushed up into the top right hand corner next to the camera module whereas the Google Pixel XL has the more traditional center space fingerprint sensor. Okay, so that's the first big design difference that you're going to notice if you didn't notice one already. Other than that, the fingerprint sensors on either of these devices work phenomenally. Okay, now another difference that you're going to see on these devices is that the Samsung Galaxy S8 incorporates a heart rate sensor, whereas the Google Pixel XL does not. The Samsung Galaxy S8 also incorporates wireless charging and fast wireless charging whereas the Google Pixel XL does not. Both devices however do incorporate 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks so that is a nice touch. The Google Pixel XLs is on the top left whereas the Samsung Galaxy S8 has its on the bottom left. All right. Now both of these devices do have bottom firing speakers now, the Samsung Galaxy S8 does have a 3000 milliamp hour battery, whereas the Google Pixel XL has a 3450 milliamp hour battery. All right, both of these devices do support uh, quick charging, in particular, the Google Pixel XL supports rapid charging, and the Samsung Galaxy S8 
supports Samsung Adaptive Quick Charge, which is built on top of uh, Qualcomm Kick Quick Charge 2.0. So that is a difference there. Now, moving on and diving deeper into the hardware on these devices, the Samsung Galaxy S8 does have face unlock. In particular, it has face unlock with an onboard iris sensor, whereas the Google Pixel XL just has the traditional 2D face unlock, which can be accessed through the smart lock security settings in the lock screen and security settings. Whereas it works, but the Samsung Galaxy S8's iris face unlock is a little bit more secure. All right. That being said, the Samsung Galaxy S8 does incorporate an always-on display, whereas the Google Pixel XL has an ambient display, but the Google Pixel XL does have double tap to wake, all right? And it does have some fingerprint sensor gestures, as does the Samsung Galaxy S8, all right? That being said, the biggest and prob probably most noticeable difference between these two devices, aside from their aspect ratio displays, is the processors on these bad boys. So in regards to the processors, the Samsung Galaxy S8 is running the newer Snapdragon processor in the 835 and the Adreno 540 GPU, whereas the Google Pixel XL is running the older Snapdragon processor in the Snapdragon 821 quad-core processor and Adreno 530 GPU. Other than that, the Samsung Galaxy S8 does incorporate waterproofing with its IP68 water and dust resistance rating, which means it can be fully submerged in up to a meter of water for 30 minutes, whereas the Google Pixel XL is only splash resistant, which means it can only stand up to splashes and light rain, you do not want to fully submerge your Google Pixel XL in any type of liquid. It will not end well. So that is another major difference there. All right. I think that about does it for the hardware differences. Now, if I forgot something, please feel free to add it down below in the comments of this video. Or if you would like to know more, please feel free to check out my full in-depth dedicated reviews for either of these devices which I'll link up down below in the video description. Now let's move on and let's talk about the software, I already did hardware, the software on each of these devices and again this is where the differing philosophies will shine through yet again. So in regards to the software we have two drastically different approaches to Android software. The Google Pixel XL is running Android exactly the way Google intended it to be, and in particular it's running Android 9.0, which is the latest version of Android, and it's running the latest security patch in the February 5th security patch, as you guys and gals can see there. All right? Whereas, when we talk about the software on the S8, the S8 is running an older version of Android in Android 8.0 Oreo and it's doing it on top of a little bit older security patch in the December 1st, 2018 security patch, which you guys and gals will see here in a few seconds. All right, right there. So you can indeed verify it is running on the December 1st, 2018 security patch. That being said, Although it's running on an older version of Android and it's running an older security patch, it does pack in a lot more features than your stock Google Pixel device does. So in particular, you have customizable dual window apps and you can set up app pairs, all right? You have bubble windows and all that stuff and you can pretty much customize this device from your to your heart's content with a built-in theme engine and all that good stuff here, all right? And in particular, one of my favorite things about the Samsung Galaxy S8, among others, is the fact that it comes with a built-in swipe down gesture, all right? Out of the box on your Google Pixel XL, you will have to get used to your fingerprint swipe down gesture 
or you will have to sideload a different launcher that gives you that ability. So it's really nice to see that in terms of your software, you know, Samsung was like, we're just going to give that to them out of the box. We're not going to make them go through additional hoops. So that is a really nice software touch that I like on the Samsung that the Google Pixel XL doesn't have out of the box. But other than that, putting these software differences aside and talking about the software on both of these devices from a day-to-day -day performance standpoint, both of these devices perform really, really well and have little to no issues. Now, these are Android devices. So with a lot of apps open in the background, they do suffer from the occasional app, app hiccup and the occasional app slowdown. Now, I would say you might want to minimize your open apps to about 7 to 14 apps because if you go over like 17 apps or better, then you will start to get that app hiccup and app slowdown. So, that has nothing to do with the devices. That's strictly an Android optimization thing. That being said, the overall software performance on either of these is top notch. And in regards to the software, I'm going to have to call that category a tie. Now, moving on, in regards to the hardware, I'm going to have to give the win to the Samsung Galaxy S8, in particular because it supports waterproofing, wireless charging, and it has a few more onboard um, features like your micro SD card slot, which I feel is a must on pretty much any Android. If you're not going to have a micro SD card slot, you better pull an essential phone and just sell the highest storage version of your device because it doesn't make sense to have two tiers when you don't have micro SD card expansion. All right. Anyways, that does it for the hardware and the software. So let's reiterate: hardware win goes to the S8. Software is a tie. All right. Now. Moving on, the next thing I want to talk about with you guys and gals is the overall Wi-Fi on both of these devices. Now, across the board, both of these devices support Wi-Fi 802.11, BGNN, and AC. And pretty much all that means is that these devices have support for your 2.4 GHz band and your 5 GHz band Wi-Fi, as long as you have a router and or modem that lets you take advantage of any of those GHz bands. And in regards to the overall Wi-Fi performance, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi performance, both of these devices performed pretty much perfectly and I had no Wi-Fi issues. That being said, I do want to take the time now to give y'all a dedicated Wi-Fi performance test, which will also double as a speaker test as well. Now, I did go ahead ahead of time and max out the speakers on these devices and I pulled up some copyright free music here and so we're gonna let this play a little bit and so y'all get a nice crisp sample and then I'm gonna give y'all my thoughts on the overall speaker performance and being as the S8 came up in landscape we'll go ahead and start there All right. slide this closer to the cameras angle down the microphone and the cameras and now we're going to go ahead and push play. Whoops, it's crooked. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and push play. Go ahead and just go through the video now. Check the overall performance. So that 
that does it for the S8. Now let's go ahead and line up the Google Pixel XL and run the test again. And let's go ahead and push play. So that does it for the Wi-Fi test and speaker test on the Google Pixel XL. Now, that being said, how do I feel about the overall speaker performance on both of these devices? Well, in my opinion, and I've been using both of these devices side by side for a little bit over a month now, I feel like the speaker performance on both of these devices is good. What I don't like about either of these devices is the overall speaker placement. I'm really not a fan of bottom firing or down firing speakers. I feel that all devices need to have some iteration of front firing speakers. That being said, the overall speaker performance on this is top notch, as is the overall Wi-Fi performance. So we're going to have to give it a tie in both of those categories. Now let's keep it moving and talk about the LTE and bands supported in both of these devices. All right. Now, in regards to the overall band supported in both of these devices, both of these devices are globally unlocked devices, which means they have full band support for all of your major carriers in the US, and they have full band support for all of your GSM carriers abroad, all right? So, at least where band support is concerned, I would call it a tie on paper. That being said, with daily performance, I found that the Samsung Galaxy S8 is a little bit better when it comes to overall band support and coverage because I found out that I recently got a European version of the Google Pixel XL which does not have all of the US bands so the Google Pixel XL that I have here only works on CDMA carriers so I was only able to test it on Straight Talk Verizon and it worked phenomenally but it did not work on T-Mobile or any other GSM carrier whoops why I keep bumping everything tonight that being said the Samsung Galaxy S8 does work on every major carrier and I tested it on just about every major carrier aside from Sprint. So it worked on AT&T, no problem. It worked on T-Mobile, no problem. It worked on Straight Talk Verizon, no problem. And pretty much it's a very plug and play experience with the Samsung Galaxy S8. Now, based on that, I would have to give the overall LTE and band support category win to the Samsung Galaxy S8. But keep in mind that's just with my experience. Now if you're mindful and you make sure you get a globally unlocked variant of the Google Pixel XL, then this category should be a tie. Alright? And I really am a big advocate for globally unlocked devices because it gives us the end user the overall freedom to choose whatever carrier we would like to go with. Okay, we don't have to get locked down into big expensive uh, mobile plans 
if we don't like our carrier, we'll just take our globally unlocked device and go to the next carrier we think offers the best deal. That's one of the reasons why I'm a big advocate for globally unlocked devices because they give you that much more freedom. So, moving on now, the next thing I want to talk about with you guys and gals is the overall Bluetooth and Bluetooth performance in both of these devices. Now, in terms of the Bluetooth on both of these devices, the Google Pixel XL has Bluetooth 4.2 in it, whereas the Samsung Galaxy S8 has Bluetooth 5.0. But other than the overall difference in the Bluetooth technology, the Bluetooth performance between these two devices is pretty much very, very similar. So in regards to the daily Bluetooth performance, I would give it a tie. But the only reason why I'm giving the Samsung Galaxy S8 the win in the overall Bluetooth category is because it incorporates one of my favorite features. And that is the dual audio feature and volume sync features. And what that does is it allows you to connect up two different devices to your S8 and you can control the audio from those two, uh, for those two different devices from your S8 simultaneously. All right, and it's really, really cool to see that that feature is built directly into the device itself. As opposed to a lot of the Bluetooth speakers and headphones that I've reviewed that have dual pairing functionality, that is only supported on the Google Pixel if the device that I'm pairing it to supports it, whereas it's supported straight out of the box on the Samsung Galaxy S8. So, in regards to the overall day-to-day -day Bluetooth performance, it's a tie, but when it comes down to the overall Bluetooth feature set, we're giving that win to the Samsung Galaxy S8. Now, let's keep it moving. Up next now is another category that I'm very, very, very serious about. And the next thing I want to talk to you guys and gals about is the overall GPS performance as I go to the wrong spot. Now, in regards to the overall GPS performance on either of these devices, they both perform pretty much flawlessly when we talk about the GPS performance on either of these devices. Regardless of whatever I was doing, turn-by-turn -turn navigation, geotagging, so on and so forth, the uh, GPS on these two devices worked flawlessly. And that's very important to me because I rely heavily on my GPS on a day-to-day -day basis. And if I'm trying to decide what new device I want to get or what device I want to make my daily driver, it needs to have a really reliable GPS module inside of it, which I'm very happy to report both of these devices do. So in regards to the overall GPS performance, we're going to have to call this bad boy a tie in this category. All right. Now, up next, the next thing I want to talk about with you guys and gals is the overall call quality and speaker call quality between these two devices. Now, in regards to the overall call quality on either of these, I have to say both devices did a great job. That being said, when we come to the overall speaker performance, I'm going to have to give the edge to the speaker performance to the Samsung Galaxy S8. That doesn't mean that the overall speaker call performance on the Google Pixel was bad, but the S8 has a speaker boost feature, which adds that little bit of extra volume that I like to see out of my devices. So in regards to the overall call quality through the built-in receiver, we're calling it a tie. In regards to the call quality through the speakers, we're giving that one to the Samsung Galaxy S8. Now. Moving on, this is where I want to give y'all my general experiences with the camera and let y'all know a few things. Now, talking about the camera on both of these devices, both of these devices have phenomenal cameras. Whether you're taking photos, shooting videos, or recording straight audio, the cameras on these devices are top notch. That being said, if I had to pick a winner in the overall category, in the overall camera category, I'm going to have to break it down a little something like this. In regards to the overall photo performance, 
I'm going to have to call it a tie. Both of these devices take beautiful photos, regardless of the lighting. Okay? In regards to the video performance, I'm going to have to give the slight edge to the Samsung Galaxy S8. You know, it's a little bit better when it comes to exposure and it has the more recording resolutions. All right? In regards to the audio performance from the cameras, again, I'm going to have to give it to the Samsung Galaxy S8. The onboard microphones on the S8, in my opinion, are just a little bit better than the onboard microphones on the Google Pixel XL. That being said, um, in terms of day-to-day -day usage, I feel the Google Pixel XL does get the job done when it comes to videos or audio recording, but at least in, um, you know, in just who's better for video and audio, I got to give that W to the Samsung Galaxy S8. So that's my breakdown when it comes to the cameras. All right. I'm actually getting quite spoiled by these two phones here when it comes to the cameras. I feel bad for any other device that I pick up now. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> Now, up next, I just want to briefly touch on the gaming performance between these two devices. Now, in terms of the gaming performance, both of these devices perform pretty much abnormally, abnormally, and I've had no issues with the gaming performance on either of these devices. I can't say that word without messing up. That being said, both of these devices do have some heating issues when you game on them for extended periods, anything over 30 to 45 minutes, you're going to have some heating issues. But that does not take away from the overall gaming experience and or gaming performance. They still perform top notch in that category. Now, if you want a more in-depth look at the performance when it comes to gaming on either of these devices, please feel free to check out my separate independent gaming performance videos on either of these devices, which I'll have linked down below in the video description as well as I'll throw a card to it up above, so y'all feel free to stop and check that out if you would like. And the same thing will go for the camera performance. If you want independent, dedicated videos on the cameras on each of these devices, I'll have that linked up down below in the video description, and I'll throw up the card in the video as well, so y'all can check that out and judge for yourself. But, let's keep it moving. Now, this is the part of the video where I would talk about the benchmarks and pretty much we're just going to breeze through this. Both of these devices pretty much performed exactly where I, where I was expecting them to in regards to the synthetic benchmarks, but I did notice a noticeable difference that I feel like I have to point out to you guys and gals and this is with the multitasking and the opening of apps. Now, when I benchmark my devices for multitasking, I use this benchmark right here, and this is the DiscoMark benchmark. And what this benchmark does is it gives me the ability to select any number of apps that I want on my device. Then it will cycle through those apps an average number of times and give me an average time that it took said device to get through all of those apps. And it will give me an individual app opening time for all of the individual apps. And I pretty much know this this recurring pretty much three out of five times. As you can see, the Google Pixel XL with the older hardware and newer software opens up all the apps a little bit faster than the Samsung Galaxy S8 with the newer hardware and older software. But that was very interesting and I felt like I needed to point it out in regards to the overall benchmarking experience. But that being said, in regards to benchmarks, nowadays I feel as though benchmarks mean absolutely nothing. What really matters at the end of the day to me is the overall combination of hardware and software which equates to an overall smooth and fluid user experience, which I'm very happy to report both of these devices deliver in spades. That being said, and you already should know what I'm about to say, if you want to see the independent synthetic benchmark scores on either of these devices, please feel free to check out my full review, which will be linked up down below in the video description. Now let's keep it moving. Up next now, 
This is one of my highly valued categories that we're about to get into. Let's talk about the overall charge times and the overall battery life between these two devices. And I was shocked. I don't know what type of black magic or trickery that Google has going on, but this was really, really, really surprising when we talk about the overall battery life and the charge times. Now, in regards to the overall battery life, I just wanna let you guys and gals know I am an extremely heavy user and my results reflect that. Everything that I'm about to talk about, anything that y'all will check out on my channel in regards to the independent videos for the phones, they will, will reflect extremely heavy usage. All right, so with extremely heavy usage, I can get through the day with both of these devices, but I did find that I needed to charge each device an additional time to get through the day. That being said, with light to moderate usage, I can easily get through the day with either of these devices on a single chart. On average, when we talk about battery life, I'm easily able to pull down anywhere from about five and a half hours of screen on time to just about eight and a half out eight hours of screen on time. Now I can push these two devices into the eight and a half hour screen on time mark, but that does mean I have to push them into the single digit remaining percentages. I don't like to do that with my devices because it degrades the battery quicker and kills the overall longevity of the device, but it is possible. So in regards to the overall battery life on these devices, I'm gonna have to call it a tie. Up next now, talking about the overall charge times on these devices, again, I'm gonna have to call this one a tie. On average, with my testing, it took both of these devices anywhere from an hour and 50 minutes to just over two hours to reach a full charge. Keep in mind, with my particular testing, I tested 10%, to 100% five times, 15% to 100% five times, 20% to 100% five times, 10% to 50 two times, 10% uh, um, uh, 15% to 50 two times, 20% to 50 two times, 15% uh, to 70 two times, 10% uh, to 70 two times, 20% um, to 80 two times, 20% to um, Ah, uh, Jesus. 20% to 72 times, and so on and so forth. And that was my particular result. Now, when you don't charge these devices to full, then you're looking at some more respectable charge times. You're looking at about 35 to 45 minutes to get up to said battery percentage. That being said, I did notice a noticeable speed difference of about 10, 5 to 10 minutes in charge times with the win in overall charge times going to the Samsung Galaxy S8. All right? And keep in mind, the S8 does have more features when it comes to the ability to charge your devices because it does incorporate wireless charging and fast wireless charging as well. So I just wanted to throw that one in there. But that being said, in regards to the overall battery life, it's a tie in regards to the overall charge times. We're gonna give the slight edge to the Samsung Galaxy S8. All right, all right, all right. You have done it. We have now made it to the final part of the, this video. And this is where I wanna talk about the price of these two devices and give you guys and gals my final thoughts and an overall recommendation or two. Now, that being said, as the S8 goes into the low battery morning there, I picked up the Samsung Galaxy S8, we might as well start it there, from Amazon, and I did it through the Amazon Prime payment program, and that means that I was able to get the device for $100 a month for five months. When everything was said and done, I paid $535 for the Samsung Galaxy S8 plus tax. All right. That being said, if you feel like you want to pick up an S8 right now today, you can pick up this bad boy ranging in condition and price from anywhere from about, um, what is it, $230 to about $500 based on the condition and where you want to pick it up from. 
Okay? Now, <clears throat> that being said, I got the Google Pixel XL from a really good friend of mine, your boy Altertech, and I got it from him for about $190. So I got a really great deal on this mint condition Google Pixel XL. All right? And that being said, if you want to pick up a Google Pixel XL right now today, it's going to run you anywhere from about Your two... phone's in airplane mode, bro, so I can't help you with chill, that at the chill, moment. Chill, bro. Chill, chill. It's going to run you anywhere from about $230 to $250 based on storage. And then you have to add another $50 to $100 based on the storage for the Google Pixel XL. All right? That being said, if you want to save a little bit of money, I can also recommend that you go with the original Google Pixel because if you want the original Google Pixel, which takes a slight downgrade in screen size and a slight downgrade in battery, then you can get the maxed out storage variant of the Google Pixel for about $200 or a little bit over $200. So I can actually recommend, if we're just talking about the price, I can recommend the Google Pixel or the Google Pixel XL over the Samsung Galaxy S8. Strictly because, again, the S8 is going to run you anywhere from $230 to $500 based on condition. That being said, if money is not an issue, I can actually recommend that you go with the Samsung Galaxy S8. It's just a lot more feature packed and you get some must have features in this device. But if you want an even better recommendation, you can even go with the S8 Plus for about $50 more. So then we're looking at about $250 to $300, all right? But if you're looking at the S8 Plus, you might as well also be looking at the Note 8 as well because that falls inside of that $300 price point so you can get a Note 8 ranging from about $300 to $350. Also, man, I got, I got a lot of recommendations when it comes to the S8. Inside of that price point of $300 to $350, you can also pick up the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active. And really, if I actually was sitting down and thinking about it, I can actually recommend the S8 Active over the S8 Plus or the Note 8 strictly because it adds a lot more durability and you still maintain the core features of your Samsung device. In particular, you get a shatterproof display and a lot more durable body, a lot more durable and rugged body with your Samsung Galaxy S8 Active than you would with your S8 Plus or your Note 8 or your regular S8. So I can actually recommend you guys go with, if money is not an option, not a problem, I can actually recommend y'all go with the S8 Active over the S8, S8 Plus or Note 8 based on price. That being said, that pretty much does it for my versus slash comparison video between the Google Pixel XL and the Samsung Galaxy S8. If you guys and gals enjoyed this video, please feel free to help your boy out and give the video a thumbs up. That being said, um, if you want to see more content like this, also feel free to hit the subscribe button down below and click off the notification bell icon right next to it so you guys and gals get notified when I post new videos. That being said, if this video piqued your interest, all the links to my full coverage on either of these two devices as well as where you can pick up these devices at some really great prices and some necessary accessories when we talk about picking up these devices. All that good stuff will be linked up down below in the video description. So if your interest is peaked, down below in the video description should be like a one-stop shop for you guys and gals and you should be good to go. 
That being said, this whole video was recorded using the rear facing 13 megapixel camera on the LG Stylo 3 in 720p at 30 frames per second. All the audio for this video was recorded using the Movo MA2010 omnidirectional microphone and the lighting for this video goes to the responsibility of the ULAN Z portable mini LED lights. And the rig that I'm using tonight is rig number two with the ULAN Z smartphone mount. All right, so please let me know what you think of the overall stabilization, the overall video quality, and the overall audio quality down below in the comments. I hope everyone has a great evening, and I will catch you guys and gals in my next video. Peace, everyone.